it will hyperinflate. And that is why two weeks ago they put another 500 billion into the system and they will decide at some point they're not going to put any more in. Well, strap your seatbelt on at that point. So, uh, there's, you're saying that it, this is like the second part of the dip, are you? You're saying it's a double dip and that it's all deliberate. The recession is a double dip and it's... It's, it, it's hard to say it's deliberate. There are so many bankers caught up in it all that they were just playing the game, making money for themselves. But yes, anyone who understands the system knows that it is ultimately destined to collapse and therefore you could accuse them of having done this deliberately. Well, because they are cyclical, aren't they? It is always cool. boom and bust. And well, I mean, I remember, <laughs> I remember Gordon Brown when he was Chancellor saying that he'd, make, he'd put an end to boom and bust. Uh, Gordon Brown said something he didn't do. I don't believe that. Don't be <laughs> well, daft. Well, I'm, I'm fairly certain he said that. Are you suggesting Gordon Brown lies? Oh, I don't I know. I couldn't possibly suggest <laughs> no, that. No. I think perhaps he was mistaken. No, neither could I, but it would be very interesting again if Gordon were, were sat here, and I'd love to hear his... Um, it's not after 9 o'clock yet, is it? No, we can't use any swear no. words yet, I'm afraid. I'd love to hear his answers, but... Um, Mark in Nottingham has said, is this why Gordon Brown sold all our gold? Yes, Mark in Nottingham. Yes, there you go, Mark. There's your answer. Um, the question is who bought all the gold. That's, in a, that's a fun one to try and track down. Well, uh, yes, I've read on the internet, is, who knows if it's true, that Fort Knox is empty. Yeah. That there is so, no gold there. And that some American senators wanted to see it and were told that they couldn't. That's it. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine our, our MPs in the House of Commons saying, well, can we go to the vault at the Bank of England and just check that that money is there and you haven't actually nicked it? Well, it's all been sold, hasn't it? Yeah. And, and Gordon Brown said, oh, no, 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 you can't do that. Well, why not? Whose money is it and what yeah. right have these people got to do this? And he sold it at the bottom of the market, didn't he? Yeah, they collapsed it deliberately, so whoever was going to buy it could buy it at pennies in the pound again. It's the biggest scam in human history, and it has to stop, and we can stop it. In fact, well, Denise in Cambridgeshire said, does the Bank of England have any gold to back up the fiat money? Go in and ask them, Denise. There you go, Denise. If you're uh, passing the Bank of England, I believe it's in Threadneedle Street in the City of London. And we'll talk about the City of London later, believe you me. See, I, I have to throw in at this point, this is what it's about. It's not about people like me sat here getting irate about it. It's about people like Denise and others who are texting in who have their questions, go and ask the Bank of England or the government. Well, Let them know that you know. All right, well, Dean in Brighton says, what is the shareholder's goal? And I imagine he means the shareholders of the Bank of England. What is their goal? You know what that might be? Well, I bet it's, um, it isn't to make losses. I bet it's, it, it's to get and to maintain and sustain their wealth. As to beyond that, many, many, many other things could be speculated upon, but they get rich and they control your government. They control every aspect of the economy as a result of the money that they're taking out of your pocket. And they even had the audacity recently, not just to take it out of your pocket, but your children's and your grandchildren's and their children, because that's how much debt the UK is in now as a result of all this money that Gordon's paying to bankers for all their good work. Yeah, I think I, I printed something out about that debt. Let me see if I can find that quickly. This is a crime that's taking place. These people are criminals. Yeah, this is interesting. Warren Buffett, who's one of the wealthiest men on earth, um, <clears throat> he says that, um, in the New York Times, Congress is now spending 185% of what it takes in. Our deficit is a post-World War II record of 13% of GDP. This is in America, obviously. Our debt is growing by 1% a month, and we are borrowing $1.8 trillion a year. Mm -hmm. So, there you go. Even Warren Buffett apparently is scared by what's happening. Of course. And at the end of the day, there, there could be a million different questions asked and a million different facts researched and written down. But what's happening... Well, sorry, the bare fact here is we are in so much debt and have be deliberately been put into that debt that when someone asks me, is it going to get worse, it, it's like, well, if you can explain how it's going to get better, do because it can't we're in so much debt there is no way out of this and they know it and they are planning for this and this is where it moves into your new world order type scenario because they know that people are 
less than pleased with what's happening. Uh, why being Gloucestershire says, or Gloucester, would Mark tell us what the second reason is for them buying the gold? Was there a second reason that perhaps you didn't get to? Maybe uh, I cut you off there? Well, it's always intrigued me. Um, anyone who, who's aware of this stuff called monatomic gold... Oh, um, monatomic gold. ..that this monatomic gold can be processed out of, out of gold. Is it I don't know white powder gold? The white powder of gold. It's a high-spin resonant state of gold. Um, this is getting into weird esoteric stuff here now, isn't it? It's no. weird esoteric, but peer-reviewed science as well. So it, it's okay, a question it's of so weird, perspective then. on it. Um, and literally, that is, uh, monatomic gold, basically, is where the, um, the electrons around the atom... Uh, sorry, the, the atom's field of energy encompasses all the electrons, so the electrons can't bond together. So the gold falls apart into a, a powder. It just means one atom, doesn't it? Monatomic. Yeah, basically. So but they can't, they can't separate. bind, yeah. It's the electrons that bind atoms together, and once they're encompassed by the energy from the nucleus, they can't bind, so and they fall apart. do they change apart. colour, then? Is that why it becomes white? Um, it's colourless, yeah. It, it, you know, because of the way it absorbs It actually turns light. into light and, and actually loses density and mass as well. Really? Um, but yes, oh, it, is it something to do with anti-gravity? <clears throat> anti-grav, yeah, anti-grav. It, it, if you had the powder of monatomic gold and put it in this glass, the glass would weigh less than nothing, yeah, depending on how much you put in, of course. But that's the principle. And it's been researched, and this is a very well-known thing. Anyone out there who thinks that's crazy, go and look at monatomic gold and then go and ask a physicist about it. And uh, you'll have some fun. Because I, I've, I've got to say, I think that people <coughs> who might have gone along with you with all the other stuff about the Bank mm -hmm. of England and the Federal Reserve... And they drop off at that point. They yeah. might think, ah, that's OK, we can sleep in our beds now. The world is as it's been described. Mm -hmm. He's clearly... A nutter. Well, that is the word I was thinking. That's yes. fine. I'm I'd... not saying that you are. <laughs> no, I'd rather... It's my I'd... job to ask the I'd questions. Rather be, I'd rather be the nutter as... Um... <laughs> you know, I, I would rather be that sort of nutter because, as I say, that is peer-reviewed science anyway. It's, it's a matter of fact. And all I'm suggesting, I'm saying it's an interesting point, that somebody somewhere is taking all of our gold right at the time. Actually, this stuff was in the 50s. So ever since then, there's been this movement to gather all the gold together. Now, if you have a, <clears throat> a substance which scientists call the most exotic matter ever discovered and it does have anti-gravity properties and many other properties and it's officially described as the most exotic matter ever discovered is it a coincidence is what i'm saying that all of our gold is suddenly being taken away i don't know mm. i don't know but it's um it's not necessary to even consider that because you you come back to the point of the issuance of the currency. OK. Now, Paul in St Helens, I don't want you to answer this question yet because we've got a long show, two hours. Paul in St Helens is saying, just how do we stop it? So, Paul, we will get to that, hopefully, uh, but not now. Um, Mick in Preston says they don't need money because they print it. They want power and to control you. Oh, exactly. Exactly. It's not the money. It's what you can do with no, the money. That's by, it. Yeah. By just suddenly removing it all and making everything worth less. Yeah. They can then acquire the real assets, like That's it. businesses and concessions on gold mines or whatever. People and... often say, why would bankers collapse their own banks? Well, first of all, the owners of those banks haven't got a clue of what's going on. If they're some of the subsidiary banks and so on, they are merely bankers. But you create the circumstances where, as the banks do, basically, by putting up interest rates, people can't pay off their mortgages, so the bank forecloses on the property. These cycles you talked about are not natural cycles. They steal your property or the nation's property from you in a well-controlled manner. But interest rates are very low at the moment, aren't they? They are. Is it, so are you saying that they're suddenly going to hike up to 15% well, again or whatever uh, they having, were? Uh, having been a mortgage specialist, and I worked in building societies for 18 years, I think it was, um, when interest rates are low, what happens? People come along and they borrow more money. Now, what happens? The price of prices goes up because how, the price yeah. of houses goes up. I mean, because everyone wants them. That's it. Things change. Interest rates at some point, because of the cycles you're talking about, which actually are man-made, up goes the interest rate. People struggle. Houses are repossessed. Interest rates drop down. It all starts over again. It's very, very.